What's up, vapers? Thanks for checking out Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick, and it's that vlog time once again. That's right. This is episode 32 of our Let's Vape vlog series, where we talk about a whole number of different topics affecting our vaping industry and the channel, etc., etc. Anyways, I've got a real quick random question for you guys. Do couples that vape together really stay together? Are you in a committed relationship with a vapor? And if so, let me know how long you guys have been together and, uh, you know, whether or not you both vape. So just leave a comment right down there in the box below. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts and stories all down in the comments section. So I've got a full show on tap for you guys today. We've got some news and advocacy stuff to get through, as well as some YouTube news as well. First impressions of a bunch of devices that I've been using recently. Uh, we've got a singular shout out to do today, and of course what I've been vaping on. Then we're going to go right into the beer segment. I've got a beer clock segment for you guys. We've got some vape mail to unbox, and uh, just a little random review at the very end. So go ahead and strap in for this one guys, grab your favorite vape, grab a comfy chair, sit back, relax, and let's vape. Well, it was inevitable someone actually vaped a Tide Pod. And uh, just a disclaimer, guys, this is not a good idea. I mean, even before I start talking about this, this is just stupid. I mean, I can't believe I'm even saying these words. Someone out there vaped a Tide Pod, but uh, I've got an article here. It just says, latest challenge trend gets weirder as guy vapes a Tide Pod. Ugh, oh my god. Anyways, um, this is from Lad Bible, and I really wish I didn't have to share a Lad Bible story, but here we are. But yeah, uh, it says the Tide Pod Challenge is one of the stupidest trends out there, agreed, at the moment. In case you were, uh, were unaware, there's a joke doing the rounds about people eating laundry detergent pods due to them looking like colorful fruity snacks. <sighs> Of course, now the joke has gone a bit far, and some people are actually putting the highly poisonous pods into their mouths, risking winding up with a nice trip to the emergency room to have their stomach pumped. Now, one Instagram account has taken the f uh, farce even further, as one of their latest videos shows a guy puncturing a Tide Pod and squeezing the green goo out to vape it. You can guess how that stunt went down. Well, yeah, I mean... Come on, let's just use common sense here. It's not smart, guys. It says the video is shared by the Instagram account Vape Tricks, with, uh, which looks to specialize in slow motion shots of people firing off smoke rings from their mouths like ghosts. As you'd expect, the dude doesn't look like he enjoys vaping the Tide Pod juice, as he immediately crumples away, spl uh, spluttering in a haze of smoke. Bet his lungs felt clean afterwards, though. Thankfully, the traumatic experience doesn't look to have affected the guy too much as the vid quickly moves on uh, to him summoning a vape from his mouth like a fireball. Uh, as if you needed telling, you really shouldn't try doing stunts like this at home. Doctors have warned that ingesting the Tide Pods is likely to give you dodgy guts at the very least. In the worst cases, people stupid enough to swallow the pods may even uh, end up getting rushed to uh, A&E, I'm assuming that's the UK, uh, ER, <laughs> suffering from breathing difficulties and severe burns. <sighs> Man, I think this thing has gone on way too long, and I know I'm not the first to say this, but can we please just end it? I mean, uh, this person deserves a big old Darwin Award. There you go. There's your award. You have won the uh, coveted Darwin Award for this year, and it's only January, so I can't even imagine. We've already screwed up, guys. Let's just go ahead and look forward in 2019. Let's just move past this one, uh, 2018. Yep, it's done already. Uh, let's just carry on. So the next thing I've got for you guys is a bit of YouTube news. Now, this doesn't really affect my channel all that much because I am a vape YouTuber, which means all of my videos have been demonetized. But here we have an article from a site called TechCrunch, and it says, YouTube tightens the rules around creator monetization and partnerships. So I know a lot of these smaller YouTube channels out there, vape-related or not, are definitely feeling the burn right now because basically what YouTube has done is made it a little bit more difficult to make money 
money off of their platform as if it's not hard enough as it is. So anyways, I'll just read a little bit of this article real quick for you guys. It says, in an effort to regain advertisers' trust, Google is announcing what it says are tough but necessary changes to YouTube monetization. For one thing, it's setting a higher bar for the uh, YouTube partner program, which is what allows publishers to make money through advertising. Previously, they needed 10,000 total views to join the program. Starting today, this is uh, as of the 16th of January 2018, uh, it says, starting today, channels also need to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of view time in the past year. For now, those are just requirements to join the program, but Google says it will also start applying them to current partners on February 20th. Uh, this might assure marketers uh, that their ads are less likely to run on random fly-by-night channels, but as Google's Paul Merritt writes, of course size alone is not enough to determine whether a channel is suitable for advertising. So in addition, he said, we will closely monitor signals like community strikes, spam, and other abuse flags to ensure they comply with our policies. Both new and existing uh, YPP, uh, YouTube Partner Program, channels will be automatically evaluated under the strict criteria and if we find a channel repeatedly or er egregiously, wow, that's a tough word for me to say, <laughs> violates our community guidelines, we will remove that channel from the YouTube Partner Program. As always, if the account has been issued three community guideline strikes, we will remove that user's account and channels from YouTube. Uh, so basically, I'm just going to kind of breeze through this here. Uh, there's really nothing else that, uh, you know, super interesting in this article uh, that we haven't already talked about. But with that being said, this is for all of these smaller YouTube channels. You know, anyone that's struggled to get up to a thousand subscribers knows, you know, just how much work they have to put in to get that th uh, thousand subscribers, but also 10,000 views as well. I mean, that's a, a pretty good accomplishment for a startup YouTube channel. Um, like I said, this doesn't affect affect me really because my channel has been completely demonetized anyways since AdGate and with that um, I have to speculate here that this kind of has to do somewhat with the whole stunt that uh, Jake Paul pulled where he went into the uh, Japan suicide forest and found a dead body and then made a joke about it. So way to go Jake Paul. Congratulations. Um, thank you for screwing over thousands and thousands of small YouTube channels by making it even harder for them to make any sort of money. Uh, off of that, that platform. So as far as how this pertains to the vaping industry, well, there are a lot of reviewers out there nowadays trying to make a buck off of YouTube. And since the whole ad gate scenario and the demonetization started happening, you're gonna see a lot of people accepting money for reviews. Now, it's not really accepting money for a good review per se, but it's accepting money nonetheless. And whether that comes in the form of basically a Q bump where they will just bump a product up to the top of their list and review it at basically as soon as they get it, or they just accept money as, to do the review, basically for time, for their time and effort they put into making the video. I mean, no matter which way you look at it, they're taking money from a company. As far as getting products uh, reviewed in a timely manner, you know, I do these unboxings live on camera, and basically I save up my vape mail from that week, and I condense it all into the weekly unboxing. So therefore, you guys know out there what vape mail I get in every single week, and kind of can gauge how long it's going to take me to get to that product's review. But with that being said, yeah, um, there's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of YouTubers out there that will review a product within within three to four days and sometimes even less than that. I mean, at the very earliest, I feel like uh, someone has done a live unboxing slash review within an hour of receiving a product. And that is just uncanny. That is insane to me. I can't even imagine being able to even classify a video as a review with less than an hour. I mean, you're literally talking unboxing a product from its plastic wrapping and reviewing it right there on the spot. That's just uh, insane to me. I really can't even, uh, uh, can't even explain how angering that is to me, but... You know, I, I really like to get a couple of weeks hands-on with a product before I can even give it a fair and honest, unbiased review. But hey, you know what? That's just me. Um, you know, maybe in the future I'll start up the Patreon again and see if that works out for me uh, for my little kind of couple of bucks here or there sort of money. But I'm not really expecting to make money off of YouTube. I have a full-time job which occupies plenty of time. I work 50 hours a week at a vape shop. So I do these videos in my spare time. And yeah, I mean, 
with that, uh, take from that what you will, guys. I just wanted to get that out there. It's been kind of on my mind for quite some time, but let me know what you guys think right down there in the comments section. Moving right along to some first impressions, the first one I've got up for you guys is this guy right here, the iJoy Diamond. I know a lot of you guys want to see this review done, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a quick little first impression on it because I have been using it quite a bit. I brought this thing with me to Vape Showcase in St. Louis, and I've been using it very, very often. So my quick little first impression on this thing is it's basically a slightly more stylish PD-270. There's really not a whole heck of a lot of difference between the two devices. This thing just looks a lot cooler. It's got that sort of like uh, angular shape to the front of it here, which is nice. It's great. And, uh, you know, it's just okay. I really am not blown away by it in any sense. But uh, as far as, you know, my first initial reaction to it, it just totally reminds me of the PD-270 with a new box around it. Um, as far as the Captain Tank goes, I'm really enjoying the Captain Tank, I gotta say. Uh, I really have no major issues with it whatsoever. I'm using the same old coil in it that it came with, with my own liquid which we'll talk about in the what I'm vaping on segment. But with that, yeah, you do get really good clouds and flavor out of this thing, and I'm actually pretty impressed uh, upon the first initial impression. Next up, I've got the Dead Rabbit SQ. This is the single coil version of the Dead Rabbit RDA, and I am really, really digging this thing. I am very happy with it so far. No major issues, I gotta say. I was kind of leery about the whole airflow system and the O-rings and everything, but honestly, so far so good with this guy here. Um, I really like the single coil format. Uh, I have a friend of mine's coil in here right now. He built a, an Alien for me. He said it was his go-to flavor build, so it's like a, a four wrap, triple 28 core stainless steel wire alien and a three millimeter uh, inner diameter which is rocking really really good on this thing right now doesn't leak at all which is awesome uh, the flavor is really really good the build is really easy and you get a nice dense warm vapor when you build it properly of course but with that so far definitely happy with this one The next thing we're going to talk about is this guy right here, which is the Bravo RTA from Otofo. And uh, already I've got two problems with this thing. One, the second I took it out of the box, I went to put the bubble glass on it because I've seen pictures of it and it looks really nice. And it shattered. The thing just shattered into a million pieces and I was really pissed off about that because I was so looking forward to having that little bit extra of juice capacity. So I was pretty upset about that. And I kind of just put it back in the box and left it for a few days just to cool off about it a little bit and just kind of try to regain my composure. And I came back to it last night trying to do a build on it for Fresh Build Friday. It was already late after I had recorded another video, so I was trying to get this one done. And no matter what I did to tighten down the screws, they just kept slipping and stripping. And the screws themselves on the gold version are gold plated and the plating just kept coming off and flaking and just, it was a mess. It was a horrible mess and I gave up on that as well. So I just kind of put it down, put it aside, let myself cool off once again. And I came back to it this morning, got the build done in it. And so far it's been okay. Now, as far as the looks goes, this thing is gorgeous. It's an absolutely gorgeous tank. It performs nicely once you get it all built up, but uh, I do have a couple of gripes with it. You know, that glass, that bubble glass, not the sturdiest in the world. Um, and also those screws are just really bad. So it may only be affected by the uh, gold coated version here. I'm not sure about the other colors, um, but I really wish I opened the stainless steel version because they'd sent me a couple of these things to review slash giveaway. So, uh, you know, I've got a couple of like bummer moments with this thing here already, but otherwise it's looking pretty darn decent. And my final first impression for this week's vlog is this guy right here. This is the Miley Pod System. Now, I've been curious about this one since I saw it at Vape Showcase in St. Louis, and I finally picked one up today for myself. I bought it with my own money, and uh, you know what? I gotta say, so far, so good with it. The, uh, the overall performance is nice. The draw is great. The battery life so far has been great. Um, and yeah, it's basically like a Juul. It's a Juul clone that got a little bit wider. It's just a 
about the same thickness as well, which is nice. As a Juul user myself, it kind of feels the same when you rest it in between your fingers like that, which is great. Um, as far as the flavors are concerned, I picked up a couple of packs of pods. I've got the mint and the mango here, which I've tried both already, and I gotta say, they're all right. They're not the greatest in the world. It's no Jewel Mint and it's no Jewel Mango, but it's okay. It's, it's pretty good. It's a suitable substitute, um, but you can definitely tell the difference. Right now I've got the mint pot in there. And uh, one thing I like about it, I'll have to actually show you, I'll take a puff on this thing, is the light system. Just take a look at this. When you can see there, it shows the light when it's actually activated. And then it shows these three little green lights right there, which is your battery life indication. That is great. I really like that. Uh, no double tapping like on the Jewel. Just basically after every single puff, it shows you the battery life. And from what I've heard and what I've seen and, you know, other people that have told me about this system, the battery life is excellent on it. So basically it's just like Juul hardware times 1.5 and then Juul flavor times 0.75. If that makes any sense to you guys out there, it made sense in my brain, but yeah, um, hardware wise, it's just a little bit better than the Juul. And, uh, as far as the flavors, eh, pretty close, but no cigar. All right, guys, it's time for my one and only shout out this week. Um, been a little bit light. If you guys want a shout out, then just email me at dailyvapetv at gmail.com and be sure to let me know your story. Tell me a little bit about yourself and what you want me to shout out or whatnot. And also let me know if it's okay to say your name. If you want me to just use your first name, that's totally fine. But uh, yeah, just let me know in the like header of the email somewhere and I'll be sure to uh, follow your instructions. But with that, I've got the one lonely shout out this week and this one is from Mike P. Mike P is from the company that I was talking about last week, North Shore Vapor. Uh, North Shore Vapor for if you're from uh, Eastern Massachusetts. But yeah, big shout out to you Mike P. He says, hey Nick, my name is Mike. I am one of the two creators of Icing on the Flake, the Frosted Flake juice that you tried at Vape Showcase St. Louis. I would love to be shouted out. I I'm a huge fan and a longtime follower. I appreciate all that you do for the community and I thank you so much for trying the juice. It was an honor to be on your travel vlog. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mike P. I really do appreciate the opportunity to try your flavors out. Honestly, I am really, really digging them and I've been vaping them ever since I got home. And with that, yeah, you're, you're, you're a Massachusetts guy, man. You're, you're a homeboy, you know? So I got to show some love for you guys. Um, I love North Shore too. I mean, uh, the cake batter, the sugar cookie, all those ones are really, really delicious. If you guys haven't tried those, make sure you go out there and grab yourself a bottle. But yeah, Mike P, you are totally shouted out, man. He's just a really cool guy in general. I'll put his Instagram name on the screen right now if you guys want to go check him out on there. But yeah, big shout out to you, Mike P, and keep those shout outs coming, guys. I am totally down to shout anyone out that is uh, wanting one. So if you want a shout out, just email me, dailyvapetv at gmail.com, and I'll get you in one of my future vlogs. So there you go. All right, guys, it's time to talk about what I've been vaping on for this past week. I've got a couple of different setups here to show you guys. A couple of repeats from last week, so we'll get those out of the way real quick for you guys. The Arc Mod with the Recoil Rebel on top with some Smeech right there in the old Recoil. And yeah, still loving that one, totally. I really have been digging that. Not only the flavor, but the overall kind of performance of the coils and everything's just clicking with that mod, so that's why I'm still using it today. Uh, next up, we've got the Fire Luke Mesh on top of the Wismec 21700 RX2. Uh, really love the battery performance out of this guy here. I can vape this thing for days, right around the 80 watt mark. It's at uh, 79 and a half watts. That's what I'm at right now with the uh, Fire Luke mesh on top. Fire Luke mesh, yeah, still ripping really good. Flavor is on point. Uh, still got the old Blazberry right there in the tank and absolutely loving that. Flavor is still top notch in this mesh tank. I am really Really, really digging it. Can't wait to get to that full review. Coming up pretty soon. Looking at the list right now, it's coming up pretty soon. Uh, but yeah, definitely digging that one still. Next one up is uh, something we were just talking about, which is the Bravo tank on top of the Wismic Ravage 230. Um, I wish I had something matchy-matchy for this tank. I really... 
I don't think I have anything good to, to put it on. This is good enough for right now. I'm, I'm definitely digging the Ravage 230. Uh, I love the color screen. The battery life is pretty good on it as well. Uh, vaping it at 83 watts with a 0.15 ohm dual flat wire 22 gauge stainless steel build in there. Um, nine wrap, uh, three millimeter inner diameter. If those, for those of you out there that are serious coil junkies, but, um, yeah, so far performance is pretty darn good on the actual Bravo itself, even though I've had a couple of issues with it. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, the juice that I'm using here is, uh, the grapple berry. This is the Mr. Salty five milligram Nick salt e-liquid. Now, uh, this is something we'll be talking about a little bit later on in this vlog, but, um, the flavor is really good. Um, um, it's just really interesting, you know, just to try something different, you know, five milligram, you would kind of think that it would have a harsher throat hit, but it doesn't. Anyways, we'll talk about that later on. So the next setup I've got for you guys is this guy right here. Another one we just talked about, the iJoy Diamond Kit with a Captain Tank on top. Uh, one thing I didn't mention in the, the first impressions was that uh, it's a little bit rattly. All around, it's just kind of... Kind of got that rattliness to it. Um, eh, it doesn't really bug me all that much, but it is something that's kind of annoying that just kind of gets on your nerves after a while. But with that, I've got some Blaz Mango in that tank right now. And uh, the, I've had that flavor in there since I first set this thing up a couple of weeks ago. And I've been loving it, man. The uh, coil is lasting a very long time, which is great. Uh, definitely good performance. Vapor-wise, I mean, I'm only at 67 watts with a 0.4 coil, and this thing absolutely rips. And my last setup that I've got rocking this week is this guy right here. This has been my grab and go sort of setup. It's been living in my pocket all week long. And I gotta say, really, really digging it. Uh, the Watofo Nudge is great for a single coil atomizer. I've really been liking uh, the whole form factor of it. The battery has been lasting a long time, which I absolutely love about it. Uh, I really like this sort of setup. I think I've found my happy place when it comes to a single 18650 mech style kind of uh, squonk box here. And it's the single coil Addies, that's the secret behind it. But this particular coil uh, reads at 0.18 ohms and it's just right. It's just the right amount of heat. You get plenty of vapor off of it and the flavor is absolutely on point as well. Almost forgot to mention, I'm rocking the cake batter in there right now by North Shore Vapor. Really good stuff. Really, really, really good stuff. It's such a simple flavor, but I absolutely love it. It's one of my kind of guilty pleasure sort of e-liquids that uh, I don't really vape all that often, but it is there in the rotation. Whenever I feel like a dessert flavor, I go ahead and grab that cake batter and I am in heaven. And the last and final setup that I've got is the Miley. Um, I forgot my jewel today, so I'm using my Miley. Um, uh, but, I mean, this is definitely a suitable replacement. I mean, as far as the hardware specs are concerned, it's got a little bit more battery life and it's got a little bit more pod capacity, so there's that. Uh, the mint flavor in it isn't quite there for me personally. I just adore the Jewel mint flavor. However, performance-wise, it does a good job and, uh, you know, it gets my quick nick fix, which I definitely love about it. You guys know what time it is. It's beer o'clock. It's time for me to drink a beer and pair it up with a nice vape. And it's my favorite segment of the vlog, of course. Why wouldn't it be? Today we're going to be drinking this one right here. This is Bissell Brothers Lux Rye Ale. And I don't know. I don't think I've ever had a rye ale before. I'm going to have to go through my untapped and uh, take a look and see if I've ever tried one before. Speaking of untapped, if you guys have the app, then make sure you add me. My username is Vaping Beer Geek, all one word. Uh, make sure you add me because I want to see what you guys are drinking on. I want you to see what I'm drinking on and then we can all cheers each other and be friends and all that good stuff. So yeah, uh, check it out on the Google Play and the App Store if you don't have it already. With that, yeah, a Lux Rye Ale. Uh, this one is 5% 5 5.1% uh, alcohol by volume. And uh, let's just go ahead and read the flavor description here. It says, this rye ale is our tropical escape to a sunnier state of mind. Uh, they use mosaic and centennial hops in this one here. So it's a two hop ale. Um, not sure what to expect. I don't, like I said, I never, I don't think I've ever tried a, a rye ale before. So we've got our glass here, our fancy glass. Hashtag I drink beer out of a fancy glass. We've got our beer here. Let's go ahead and crack it. 
I love that sound. Man, I love that sound. And let's give it a pour. Pour it gently. Oh, oh, oh. A little harder. There we go. Get a little bit of head on there. That's the secret, guys. Just a little bit of head. So we have a, yeah, a nice kind of cloudy, dark amber orange, kind of a reddish hue to it as well. It's a little bit opaque. Can't really see light through it. Uh, I can see a few little bubbles forming at the bottom and the head is a lot of tiny bubbles here. As far as lacing is concerned, kind of runs down a little bit quickly, but it does leave a little bit of that nice lacing on there. Um, looks really delicious. Let's check out the smell. Oh, wow, that's interesting. I'm getting kind of a, a mango out of it right away, like a mango and citrus kind of mixture. Definitely tropical, definitely, definitely tropical. Um, yeah, I'm thirsty. Let's go ahead and have a sip off this. Hmm, that's weird. It's weird good. I'm, I, that sounds weird. It sounds bad when I say it. Uh, it's weird, but it's good. You know, uh, you get the tropical fruit on the initial touch of your tongue. It kind of hits your tongue and you get that tropical sort of sensation. It's like almost like a tropical punch and it kind of has that same consistency as well. It's almost like if you mix like a, like a pineapple, guava, mango, citrus punch in with a little bit of Sprite, you get that little bit of effervescence as well, that bubbliness, and it just kind of hits your tongue immediately and gives you that flavor rush. Then after that, it kind of mutes out and then goes into a sort of like rye, hoppy sort of like ale kind of aftertaste. So the, the, the initial flavor is right away the fruit. And then the aftertaste is kind of like a beer, which is kind of weird, but interesting. So another sip here. So on that one, yeah, I'm getting that kind of lingering fruit flavor. Like, you know, if you ever drink fruit juice and you, you just have that like kind of lingering flavor in your mouth, I definitely get that. But as far as the actual beer drinking experience from like the first second it touches your tongue until you swallow, you kind of go from tropical fruit and then ale on the back end. So kind of an interesting one. Um, that's the only way I can kind of describe it, but, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, let's pick out something to pair this with. This is going to be kind of a challenge here. So I'm just gonna have another sip and think about it. So I'm trying to think of a way to kind of add on to the flavor a little bit more and kind of round out the tropical notes as well as kind of accentuate the aftertaste. I want that flavor to kind of like be boosted up a little bit more. So I'm thinking either the Blas Mango or possibly the Jungle Juice from Mayhem Vapor. That might do the trick. Um, I don't know. We're going to have to try both of them out. So since the only dripper I'm running with a fruity flavor is the Recoil Rebel, we're going to use that one today. Um, let's start off with the Blas Mango because I feel like that might be the winner on this one here, but I do want to try both out. So, all right, we're all dripped up there. Let's go ahead and try this one out. So right there, I'm going to tell you that one's going to be tough to beat, but I feel like Jungle Juice might add a little extra something to the mix here. So let's go ahead and drip this one real quick and we'll try it out as a pairing. So I just got to say right off the bat that both of these are a very good pair with this beer, but um, I, it's really hard for me to pick a winner because they both bring something a little bit different to the table. The mango flavor kind of masks the whole beer flavor a little bit, which I don't like actually. I kind of like having that little bit of a, a bitter sort of aftertaste to it, but the jungle juice totally adds a different element to the mix and that is very much enjoyable as well. Plus you get a little bit more of that bitter aftertaste, which I actually enjoy. So as far as this one goes, I think I'm going to favor the Jungle Juice, but both are really good if you want to pair this one up. Um, yeah, I mean, the beer itself is very enjoyable on its own, um, but yeah, if you want to pair it up with anything, I would say some sort of fruitier, tropical sort of flavor just to kind of add to it a little bit. Something not too sweet, and that's kind of one thing that I fear that the mango is doing is it's sweetening it up almost a little bit too much. You want this more of a sort of natural fruit kind of flavor, and the Blas Mango tends to be a a little bit on the candy side. So, hey, there's that. Take from that what you will. I'm going to go ahead and finish this one up real quick and then we'll move on.
All right, guys, it's vape mail time. We've got some vape mail to unbox and I'm excited. So let's dive right into this one. Our first up is this guy right here. I already know what this is because he told me he was gonna send it. This one is from thecloudyvapor.com. But let's go ahead and open it. I'm not gonna ruin the surprise just yet. So er, er, tear right in. Ah, boom. All right, yeah. This is a dead rabbit that Brett sent me from thecloudyvapor.com and Big thank you to you, Brett. Really do appreciate the generosity. Uh, I realize that this one is a little bit beyond its prime as far as the review goes, but if you guys want to see me do it, I'll do it anyways. The real thing is, he also sent me uh, some extras with this one uh, a little bit ago. He sent me a couple of the caps for it. All right, so yeah, we got the regular standard stainless steel dead rabbit here but he sent me the caps. So I've got these caps right here. This one is the priest cap and this one is the butcher cap. And these are kind of the competition sort of things. So uh, as you guys know, the dead rabbit has that kind of like angled vertical air slot thing going on. Well, this one changes it to basically a straight on horizontal airflow for the people that like doing cloud comps so that they can purge through them and get a bigger inhale and a little bit more airflow with these guys here. So that's kind of the real reason he sent me the the dead rabbit. I am so happy to finally have one of these things. I've been wanting one for a while now and uh, just got to give Brett a huge shout out and thank you for sending me one uh, for the purpose of taking a look at those caps and possibly for a future review if you guys want to see that. So the next one I've got, I can pretty much take an educated guess at what it is. Um, let's just show you guys just by audio here if you guys can tell what it is. I mean, to me, that sounds very familiar. That sounds like coils. So let's go ahead, take a look here. Let's get into the box if I can. Yeah, that would help. All right, well, okay. Mm, coil style magic box. All right. Oh, we've got a whole stack of them here. Oh. <laughs> All right, we've got uh, Nichrome 86 Core Fuse Claptons, uh, Nichrome 80 Twisted Clapton, Nichrome 80 Fuse Clapton, uh, Nichrome 80 Juggernaut, Nichrome 80 Triple Core Fuse Claptons. And there's a couple more. Nichrome 80 Juggernaut, uh, Nichrome 80 Skyfire Coil, Sky fire, fire coil, okay. Nichrome 80 quad fuse Clapton. Uh, Nichrome 80 sky ladder coil. And Nichrome 80 five core fuse Clapton coil. So some pretty exotic stuff here. Not your average everyday pre-mades. And last but not least, we have uh, more Nichrome 80 fuse Clapton. I'm assuming these might be a little bit different as far as the cores and everything. Nichrome, Nichrome 80 triple core fuse Clapton and Nichrome 80 alien. I knew there had to be some aliens in there and that's it. Now the next one, I have no freaking clue. This is not something you see every day for vape mail. Um, I really can't feel any. Oh, there's something down there. I have no idea. <laughs> This is gonna be interesting, because I have no freaking clue what this is. Oh, geez, I'm getting cardboard everywhere. What the hell is this? Okay, it's just one little tiny thing. Uh, okay, it's for something I'm about to unbox. All right, so I guess we'll just dive right into the next one and then I'll show you the whole thing. But I'm pretty sure that that's all that was in here. Yeah, that's all that was in here. All right, so last but not least, we have the black magic box here. Very familiar to me. Um, what's the best way into this thing? All right, let's go at it. All right, step one, complete. I'm just gonna rip it. Yeah, there we go. All right, yeah. So this is from Wizmec. This is the Luxotic box, their newest, latest and greatest squonk mod. Give you a nice little 
poster. I'm going to hang these, I swear. <laughs> Would you guys like that if I hung them behind me here or something? So we've got the new Wismec box to show you guys. And that's what the little part there was for. Oh, cool. Nice. I was hoping it was the green one. Yeah, nice lime green color. Love it, love it, love it. We're gonna just take it out real quick and uh, take it for a, a first initial spin here. Let's take a look. All right, a little bit different packaging too. You don't see Wismic packaging like this every day. Normally it's just a plain black box. And there we go. Cool. All right, so that's a pretty neat little squonker. Nice clicky button. Uh, yeah, just a simple little magnetic door. Kind of a honeycomb resin thing going on. Uh, the bottle, I've seen stuff about the bottle. The bottle is kind of nasty feeling. It's like that really cheap plastic, ugh, ugh, ugh. Not my favorite. Um, but I've already seen a hack where you can change out this bottle to a nice silicone one. So probably going to be doing that. Not going to lie. I'm probably going to be changing, changing this bottle out to a nice silicone version just because that plastic, I just cannot stand. But overall, I mean, it seems kind of nice for what it is. Oops. Don't want to drop it. Uh, looks like a single 18, 650. Nice. Nice feel to it overall, like it's got that big Wismec logo on the back. Love the green color. Uh, some, you know, ugly Ultem on the top there, but hey, hopefully we can change that out. Nice tiny little drip tip. Man, that, that's an absolutely tiddly little drip tip. And then you get this. I'm going to pop this right in the box because I'm afraid I'm going to lose it. It is the... Ultem beauty ring. So you can actually attach this. You can take your RDA off and then slide this right on just like that. There we go. Then it makes it look extra luxurious. Ooh, meh, not too crazy about it, but hey, that's just me. So yeah, that is the vape mail I've got this week. We've got uh, the dead rabbit RDA that we're going to be checking out the caps for. We've got some coil style coils to check out. We've got the Wismec, what is this thing called? Luxotic? Luxotic box? Luxotic box, yeah, all right. And the beauty ring to go along with it. So there you go. All right, guys, so it's time for a random juice review. And today we're going to be taking a look at this stuff right here. This is Mr. Salty Grappleberry 5 milligram e-liquid. Now, I was really curious about these when I saw them at Vape Showcase in St. Louis. And I've got to get my hands on some, so I really wanted to try it out. Uh, I've got it loaded up here in the Bravo tank by Watofo. Um, so let's just take a look real quick and uh, we'll tell you guys the flavor description. So it says here, an unexpected mashup of strawberry and green apples for a pleasantly fruity mix. Now, when I saw Grappleberry, my first thought was grape. Now, I'm glad it's not grape because it doesn't taste like grape. So with that, I've got it loaded up right here in the Bravo. Let's go ahead and have a puff. So I know what you're thinking, five milligram, it must be harsh. No, in fact, it is not. It actually feels like three milligram and basically it's a cleaner way to vape. So you can actually get more nicotine in liquid without having that harsh, heavy sort of throat hit to it. And uh, I guess from what I gather, he was making the 25 and 45 milligram and people wanted to sub -ohm it. So uh, he was basically forced to come out with a five milligram version for his locals and you know what? I'm glad he released it to the masses because this stuff right here tastes really, really good. It's a very good flavor. You can taste that, that sour green apple and that little bit of strawberry and it's not harsh at all. I'm telling you guys right now, I swear to God, it is not harsh. It doesn't feel like you're vaping six milligram. It feels like you're vaping more like three milligram. But with that, yeah, let's go ahead and have one more puff off this thing and we'll talk about it a little bit more. 
So there's no harsh burn. There's no really adverse flavor at all in this stuff here. It tastes like a sour apple and a little bit of strawberry, and it's really, really good. Now, the one thing I must say is, since it is salt-based nicotine, you don't get any sort of nicotine flavor at all. And in most cases, that's a good thing. I really think that a cleaner flavor is a good thing, but I feel like it's kind of missing something. And I feel like if it had regular nicotine, it would taste totally different. And I'm not saying better or worse, but just different. Um, I feel like I'm just so used to the taste of regular nicotine in my three milligram e-liquid that this kind of just throws me off. I'm gonna have to actually get used to vaping on this stuff. And it's just different. I also kind of constantly fear that sort of nicotine buzz yeah, you know, I, I'm not vaping to get a nicotine buzz. I'm vaping just to kind of keep me at my right level. And with five milligram e-liquid, you are getting a little bit more per puff, especially when you're vaping at uh, about 83 watts here on the Bravo tank. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, you've got to take it a little bit easy on this stuff. I mean, I haven't experienced a serious buzz whatsoever from it, uh, but I kind of don't feel like I'm puffing on it as much as I puff on my three milligram. Let's just put it that way. Anyways, uh, yeah, it's good. It's really good. I want to try more flavors from them and uh, I'm looking forward to trying a couple more out. We've got some more here, uh, which I'm totally going to be dig digging into, but so far, so good with this stuff. Uh, if you want more nicotine and vape less, uh, if you want that, then definitely give this stuff a shot here. Flavors are really, really tasty. I do recommend you guys try them out because he's got a lot of really good flavors for this stuff. And it's just a totally different vaping experience. So, hey, why not give it a shot? So that about does it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. Don't forget to click that little notification bell right next to the subscribe button if you want to be alerted whenever I upload videos. Also, leave me some comments in the box below. I'd love to hear your thoughts all about any of the topics that we talked about in this video. Also, check out the advocacy and my social media links right down there in the box below. If you haven't joined the Daily Vape TV Cloud Crew on Facebook yet, then join today. The link is right down there. It's a lot of fun. You can share your vaping experiences, stories, coil builds, hand checks, all that good stuff. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. And as always, vape on.